Hello again, Andy with Handy Andy Handyman and Handy Andy On Demand. Welcome back to a project run through. Today we're in Sandy Springs. We do so much work over here. Uh, it gets a little crazy. So this is a cute house and uh, it's a lot larger than it looks. And so today we're actually out for the buyer's agent and her customers. Uh, Lindsay does a ton of business in Atlanta. If you need a good in-town agent, uh, certainly ask us and we'll be happy to give you your contact info. Uh, and so this house, has been recently repainted. It's in pretty good shape. There's a lot of little in -in stuff that the sellers could have done before they listed the house for sale. Uh, rotted wood's always gonna come up unless it's a cash purchase. Most of the lenders today are gonna make you fix this stuff before you close out your loan. Uh, and so there's a number of things we're gonna talk about on this house. And so one of the things that we talk about all the time on every house in Atlanta, they have three things in common. Every house in Atlanta is gonna have some mold somewhere somewhere it's going to have critters or varmints in the attic area or in the crawl space or in the basement and it's going to have termite carpentry ant damage somewhere the other thing that comes up all the time homeowners are always looking for maintenance free maintenance free maintenance free maintenance free they don't want to clean gutters you're going to be better off in most instances even though this house has a lot of trees you can see they added gutter helmet that's this capper right across the top and what they don't tell you when you go to the home show in a system like this, usually what happens with this system, this is called gutter helmet uh, versus gutter guard. Gutter guard is a fully integrated system with the gutter and the helmet. This is a separate add-on. And more than likely looking at this system, the guys that changed out this roof said to the homeowner, hey, if you roof with us, we'll go ahead and add this gutter helmet and not charge you for it. And so that's what this looks like that was done. And what they don't tell you is Yes, it'll keep the leaves out of the gutter, but if you don't clean that edge at least once a year, so you get into areas like here. See that algae, mold, and mildew buildup across that, all the way across? So once you get to that point, the water's not going in the gutter anymore. Most of it's coming over the top. And that's what led to this little bit of rot right here in the freeze board. And then the other thing, because you've got this gutter helmet, they didn't seal where the gutter helmet hits the side of the siding, so water's getting in between right there. Is it a huge deal? No, but it's something that you want to address. Most of the downspouts, like this is six inch gutter with a three by four downspout. It's the best we can do without doing anything custom. And so here at the driveway, it's shedding the water to the driveway. It, a little bit of the water, you can see it running, you can see the trail, right? Uh, and so we'll dress some more of the gutters as we go around the house because they've got underground, underground drains that are clogged. On the main home, which is here, it's got a crawl space area on this uh, here and they did for ventilation they did a, a well here and there's a little tab in here if you can see it and so when I came here today it was closed you can close it during the winter time but then you got to remember to open it back up again because if you don't you're not getting any air cycling through there so you're gonna get powder mold building up in the basement so any leaks in the basement which we've got a couple leaks from kitchen and bathroom plumbing once it gets in there you're gonna have some centralized mold forming around those leaks because it's humid down there. Um, this house doesn't have a mold problem. It's been sold or closed for a few months. So if you had an issue with mold, you'd see mold scattered around the house. So as you look at this gutter across the front of the house, they took away the downspout here. They drained it to the left side because the land slopes away. So that's perfect. But then when you get over here, this is the other problem with, with systems like this is grit and granules come off the roof. Some debris gets inside that gutter. As long as the edge is clear, water's flowing inside the gutter, it's carrying that debris with it, and then it's getting clogged right here because here they've got an underground drain and it appears to be corrugated black pipe, which is this right here, instead of smooth pipe. So this needs to be pulled, this is solid, compact, this gutter can't pass water anymore. So what's happening now is every rain, the water's coming over the top of this gutter and is dropping right here in this left corner. So I expect some powder mold uh, and a little bit of mold spores in this area. We can treat that with microban. It's an instant kill. There's some other products we can use for more extensive mold issues. This house doesn't really have a mold problem. It's just, it's maintenance stuff. So if you're gonna put these systems on your house, know that you need to clean that edge once a year. Depends on the size of the house. We have to hand clean it. There's no other way to do it. Um, and if you don't use companies like us to come out and clean your gutters, you're gonna wind up with situations like this. So this one, we're gonna to have to clear hand clear that clog, run a high pressure spinner that we've got 
through that line and see if we can clear it. And honestly, it probably comes out somewhere right in here, my guess, and they've covered it over with, with pine needles. That's the problem with landscapers is, it's a problem with every contractor. Unless you get a generalized contractor like us, where we specialize in a lot of different things and our guys are cross-trained, the landscapers come through, each trade just does what they do, and they move on to the next project. So somewhere in here, more than likely, they've clogged that line and just left it. Um, but it should have come around to this edge somewhere where it can feed into the ivy and, and be covered over uh, and flow, rather. The water will flow into the ivy, and that's the end of it. The, the yard has a, a nice slope. It's going to drain really well. This side of the house is in pretty good shape. We're not going to be able to get in here really well. Um, and I don't have my light on in here, so it's going to be dark. I'm going to have to go back out. Um, but I can show you a couple little things. Nothing major with the deck at all. The home inspector pointed out a couple of things. And, uh, you know, here's the thing with inspectors. This one actually did a, very, a, a pretty thorough job in here. And so... If you bear with me here, we'll get some light on the subject. So most of these deck posts, six by six and four by fours, a couple of them are notched to make the supports that they did in here. It's a single story deck, so we're not as worried about it. And up in this area right here, you can see where they actually shimmed the post. See a little add-on piece? If we can add screws and bolts like here, this is what the inspector's talking about. Everything is nailed. So in here, technically, should there be a brace post supporting through here yes but they ran this gas line through it it's single story so i'm not as concerned the guys will have to probe in here and make sure every one of these posts like here is set in concrete and it may not be um, they've added some joist hangers up in here none of these are screwed every one of them is is nailed in so we need to come in and just add a screw on either side and that'll be fine you can see in some areas right here and this is what drew the inspector's attention is this this little uh, brace that comes across isn't nailed is, isn't screwed it's nailed so we just need an inside corner brace screwed in there and it'll be fine when you get to the deck steps down here a few of the the treads are rotted and so we'll include that in the stringer which is the outside support right here and i don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it but you see the rot right there and further down in the corner right there there's a hole actually through it it's rotted through so both of these stringers on the left and right side of the deck steps are rotted. And you can see somewhere where you see the white in these steps, the treads are rotted. There's three of them that are rotted through here. And then what the inspector was talking about, where they terminate in the deck like here, there's supposed to be a brace that's built down the corner and set in concrete right here at the steps. And he's right about that. They're not expensive fixes. Uh, and then here, wherever you've got a post supporting, this post is nailed instead of being screwed. It's a little simple stuff. It's actually a really well-built deck. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, inside the, the, this mini crawl, I couldn't get to the main crawl, but inside this mini crawl, this light's burned out back here. You can see the, it's got joist hangers all the way through here. They've got one nail on either side. So the guys just need to come through and add screws. That's all, all the way down this line. Again, not a huge repair for anybody. All these things add up a little bit as you're going through it. Um, but overall, it's actually a, a pretty nice little, nice little spot in here. They did a nice job building it. It wasn't in the inspector's report, I don't think, um, but they kind of cased over. So like in the corner right here, it started to get a little bit of rot. Um, this is a double up decorative support all the way through. And you'll come back over here. You got the same thing out here. This area doesn't get a lot of sunlight. And so the woodpeckers have come to it right in here. This was doubled up. And so this outer piece really needs to be replaced right here. See the rot in this corner? If they want to. And you've got a decorative piece here that's just rotted out as well. And then just keep this stuff stained up. It's really just decorative lattice. Uh, and if you don't keep it stained and caulked, it's going to rot out. Most of it, again, is in pretty good shape. So you've got one underground drain comes out here. We just need to flush it through. And that's probably the downspout that picks up in this corner right here. I just can't tell you where it comes out. The inspector noted handrails here. Obviously, you wouldn't add handrails here. Um, you've got nice wide steps. 
Is it going to come up on the inspection report when you sell the house? Yes. Uh, but no one's going to add railing here. A lot of the stuff you see in inspection reports is just CYA type stuff. You got a beautiful yard back here. They spent a small fortune putting in all this uh, flagstone slate. So this is the on the front side of the steps leading to this really nice area up here. And so you can see where it's rotted through the post. And you'll see ants crawling around through it. There's one. There were some big carpenter ants out here earlier. There's one right there. You can see them headed through. See one just jumped out right down here. And you'll see the little round holes right here is one. You can see the softness in it because they've eaten through it. And there's one hole right here through this tread. When you see those nice round holes, that's carpenter ants that do that. And they get in there because these, these steps didn't have enough pet, uh, pitch to them. So water sitting on them and trapping and just rotting. So you've got one, two, and three. You can see how soft this has gotten here. And same thing here. And this is all ants and insects in here. You see the holes right here? That's all it is. Nothing major, nothing to be alarmed at. We just need to make the repair. Here, this post really needs to be replaced. This appears to be cedar, but I can't tell. Uh, and it takes a lot of moisture rot cedar. You can see how they made the decorative cap on the top. And they puttied this, the last painter's through. And that's rotted through again. See how soft my finger's going through the top of the piece right here. So they just caulked over the rot and painted it. Uh, and so we'll be able to secure that by replacing this end and this end. The rest of the railing is fine. This was the downspout right here. It's three by four, which is a great size, but we need to pop it clear once a year. Just have us come out and clean the edge and then we'll flush these things and make sure they're clear. It's kind of like the sinks in your house and the drains. Nobody does this, but you're supposed to really take a plunger every six months, fill it with water and flush it through under pressure because that'll clear out all the soap scum and toothpaste and all that stuff. Otherwise it'll clog over time. This right side of the house, this corner and this corner is where the, the inspector said there was some efflorescence at the brick and that's just moisture that's wicking through. So you'll see some dark shading and some gray efflorescence. The moisture getting against this corner wall is forcing the minerals out of the cinder block and that's what efflorescence is. So the one thing here, there's two things going on in this corner. One, this particular downspout is dropping all the water right here against the corner and it's just sitting here. So we just need to extend this out to the flagstone, just get a black drain pipe. This is where you use corrugated drain pipe is fine. As long as it's not buried underground like that front corner, the corrugated pipe is gonna clog and that's exactly what happened. You're gonna see ants in different places. It's not a big deal. Again, here's one of our little friends right here hiking down through and he's on this drip cap right here which is rotted at the left rear corner and there's about eight feet of this through here that's rotted and then the bottom edge is wide open so it's not a ton of water but every time it rains a little bit of water is getting through this edge and weeping into the inside where it can't get out it's in a sealed crawl space so we need to just seal that all the way across and again extend the downspout away and make sure the landscapers are not clogging when we add this drain pipe to here in this azalea area right here it'll drain nicely across the backyard and that'll reduce the issues in this corner so i think we've pretty much covered most of the stuff there's a few issues with like this gutter helmet got crushed this gutter appears to be clogged so that's again the water dropping instead of going through the downspouts most of it's sitting right against the house right in this area at the back of the chimney we'll catch it over here you've got a little bit of rot on the right side see there's your carpenter ant right there there he is you come out at this time of the day and you'll follow them right into their little houses but they're basically living in that wood if you give them damp wood or wet wood you just gave them a hotel six and they'll live right in there we've got other videos online you can follow the ants around it's pretty funny the stuff that you see when you're looking at houses so here on this chimney right here the right rear side you get about nine rows of rotted siding you can see some of it in there this is a pine lap siding and if it doesn't stay caulked and sealed and painted it just rots painters always cheat in these little chimneys because they're hard to paint it looks good from the ground when you first pay them and no one ever catches it uh, chimneys are the biggest areas on your house that are going to rot overall though the siding in this house is in great shape the inspector noted a few open butt joints and some splits we would just wipe those down 
with a mildew side and clear caulk them. In terms of painting, it's fine for now. You've got a few years before you'll need to paint this again. And it'll show you quick around the front of the house. Again, it's a great house. You want to trim back any trees like in here that are over this carport. And then as you come up on the roof, just a few tweaks. Um, I didn't video it, but I can try to, I guess. All the vent boots at the rear need to be sealed. And so that's that leak that's in the utility area. The water's just coming down the vent boot. Again, you want to walk the house every six months and look up into your ridge peaks like here. See the damage? And a limb might have caught that or birds will come and uh, they'll break shells, snails open, or they'll kill prey up there or the wind will flop in and damage it. There's some shingles in the small crawl space out back that we can patch this with. At the front of the garage, this bottom row of siding needs to be replaced all the way across and sealed. The windows right here are the only two windows, I think, that have blown thermopane seals, and we can actually replace those units and not have to replace the whole window. Um, we caught the freeze board here. On the front dormers, there's a little bit of, again, you got a torn ridge shingle right here at the front right. So you just want to walk through and look into the black and see the sky. And that's the right front one. There's one at the, over the front entry right here. And then on these, the dormers, you've got some rotted uh, five quarter board right here on the right side. You've got a little bit, you've got some rotted siding on the left here. The center dormer has the rotted nose across the front, rotted quarter board, three rows of rotted siding on the right. The left one has three rows of rotted siding on the right side. We'll replace that with smooth hardy plank. And like the inspector said, you want to see an inch to two inches. You want to see flashing under there. I believe there is flashing under there. They just, when they added, they may have put these architectural shingles over the original roof. Um, I'm not sure, you know, how this roof was set originally, but we'll figure it out when we get up in there. And then you've got the same issue on the left side here. You've got some, you've got the rotted nose across the front. You've got a couple rotted rows on the left side here same I'm not gonna be able to catch it with the video right now whenever you see wrinkling in the wood like this that left brick mold right there camera will focus in a second there you go see that right in there it's all rotted and where you see the black gap in the window sash it just needs to be caulked and then that front nose is rotted and there's just one more piece of trim here at the front post right here the top cap of this post is rotted and that's they filled it with caulk Whenever you see that soft waviness right there, it just lets you know it's rotted. See the difference on the one to the left? It's solid. So it's all just little stuff, nothing, nothing really major. It's a great house. I think we'll be real happy here. Um, and that's pretty much what we have on this one. So we've been doing everything in Metro Atlanta for 25 years. It's hard to believe we've been out here that long. Um, I'm Andy, I'm a fourth generation contractor. It's me and my brother and a team of 30. We run all over the place doing everything. Just be patient with us. It's tough to get us on the phone sometimes. You usually see me either in this truck or a conversion van. You can find us at 770-912-2829 or you can catch us online at handyandyfixedit.xyz. Bye for now.